Africa, and I want to talk just briefly about solutions. Um, and you know, there are, I think, some very modest steps that we could take to address this problem, um, and I would encourage you all to, to take them. One is, of course, to just contribute to individual women running for political office. I'm sure the AAUW strongly encourages that. Um, as well as contributing money to PACs that support women candidates. There have been a number of PACs that have emerged in recent years, and, and actually so also some super PACs um, that specifically contribute money uh, to women candidates, like Emily's List, for example. Um, I think we could encourage both the Senate and the House to adopt the rankin Chisholm rule, uh, which is sort of like the Rooney rule in professional football. It would require that a diverse pool of candidates be interviewed for top staff positions uh, in the House and the Senate. Um, uh, the, the group represent, uh, rep represent Women, and I used some of their charts um, a little bit early in the presentation, is circulating a petition uh, for a gender balanced cabinet urging the next uh, president of the United States to maintain a diverse and gender balanced uh, cabinet. And I would certainly encourage you all to, to, to go to their website and sign that uh, petition. Um, I think there are more, but I think if we wanna really address the root causes of the problem, more ambitious reforms um, are required. And the most obvious ones would be to amend the constitution to address the problems created by Citizens United. So there is an organization called Move to Amend that is uh, trying to get um, localities and states to pass resolutions in support of a constitutional amendment that would essentially overturn Citizens United, basically by saying that corporations are not people um, and, that, and money is not speech. Um, there are other versions of constitutional amendments uh, that have been floated to address the problems created by Citizens United. So, for example, uh, there's a group, a group called CFR28.org, campaign reform 28org that is urging people to pass, that is urging us to pass a constitutional amendment establishing a low per donor limit on campaign contributions and prohibiting corporate and other outside spending altogether. It's another route. Um, I think a, a, camp, a, a reform that, that John McCain actually supported when, when he was in the Senate is something that should really strongly be considered. And if there is a Democratic majority in the Senate, is something that conceivably could pass, which is free airtime for ballot qualified federal candidates who meet certain minimum requirements. Because if we had free airtime uh, for political candidates, that would to some degree level the playing field for women and candidates of color. Um, the most obvious solution that wouldn't run into problems uh, with the Constitution or with the Supreme Court is to implement either full or partial public financing of elections and political parties. I actually lived for 12 years in Minnesota, which has um, a, a partial public financing of elections. Um, and it does a, a, you know, create sort of a, it, it, it opens up political discourse to a wider variety of, of voices. People who otherwise would not ever consider running for office can consider running because of, it's because of this sort of partial funding of elections. And if we had that, we could go to the next step, which is to do something like France does, which is to tie public financing and free airtime um, and other sort of state subsidies for elections to gender parity requirements. So in France, if a political party has a gender difference of more than 2% between the male and female candidates that it runs for office, the party loses a portion of its public uh, funding corresponding to 75% of this difference. Um, so they actually suffer a penalty if they do not actively run you know, a, a more or less equal number of male and female candidates 
uh, for political office. There are other countries in Europe that have similar kinds of laws. Croatia, for example, Bosnia, Bosnia Herzegovina, I think, also has a rule like that. Um, in the Scandinavian countries, uh, many of the Scandinavian governments you know, have set up funds that are designed to encourage women to participate in politics. And it's, I think it's no accident that, for example, you know, Iceland was the first country to have kind of gender parity in parliament and, and you know, elected, you know, elect a woman as, 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 you know, as the head, as the head of the government, um, because all of those Scandinavian countries have, have, you know, have, actually invested lots of money in encouraging women to run for political office and supporting female candidates. 